I want to continue our worship today. Extend our worship a little bit. Is that okay if I extend our worship a little bit? Uh, have you been appreciating our worship team? I want to extend our worship a little bit today because I, I believe that as we open God's word and he speaks to us, we've been singing to him. If you're new to this and you're just checking this out, uh, I'm so glad to, to meet you. Uh, if you're watching us online, I'm so grateful that you're here as well. But we've been singing our songs to God. We've been singing these as, as a declaration to him, as a, a way to worship him. But now it's when it's his time to speak, we often look at that differently. And, and that's still worship. We're still worshiping. We open up God's word and he begins to speak to us and he begins to move in us. Then now we experience the, the impact of worship. This is the precursor to what God really wants to do in worship. Because when you come before God and you, you kneel before him, you sing before him, you tune your hearts to him, he, he actually begins to want to desire to speak to you because you've placed yourself in a position where you can finally hear him. So we're going to continue our worship today and open his word and ask him to speak. We've been in this series, step by step, wondering what is the next step that God has us on in our spiritual journey. And I don't know uh, you, if you're watching online or if you're just coming into this place for the first time, uh, I, and even if you have been here many times, I may not have any idea what your next spiritual step is, but I am and have been worshiping to a God who knows exactly where you are today. He created you. He knows you. He knows exactly where you are today. He knows exactly what's going on in your life. He knows exactly what the next step is for you. He knows what it is for me. In Psalm 37, we, we began this series, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. That every step that I take forward is ordered by God, not by anyone else, not by those around me, not by the circumstances in my life, by the Lord. Every step that I take is measured by him. Otherwise, you're just taking steps. You might be going somewhere but your steps are ordered by someone or something else. How amazing would it be to know that your steps, the next step that you take is ordered by God and the next step. And if you would be identifying one step and another step and another step that God was making clear to you was your next step, then your steps could be ordered by God himself who takes delight in each and every one of the steps. Psalm 40 says, he brought me out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. He is my foundation upon which I walk today. He is moving forward with us, underneath us. Proverbs 16, he can make we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. We hear Job in his crisis. Does he not see my ways and number all my steps? I don't know where you're at today. I don't know where you are. But I know God knows exactly where you are. And I know that he wants to order your steps forward. He wants to order your steps forward. So I also know this, that God doesn't want you to take those steps alone. His desire for your life and what I want to talk to you about today as I open God's word is just this in our final week of step by step that no one walks 
alone. Say that with me. No one walks alone. God, we receive your word today. Speak to us in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team, for continuing our worship. Thank you. I'm so glad to, to be with you and open God's word and, and, and decide and help be in the moment when God determines your next step. And in fact, have the opportunity to walk with you. To walk with you. Our, our desire as a church is that no one walk alone. That's God's desire for each and every one of us. That no one would walk alone. That's his desire for you, for me, that nobody walk alone. I remember, um, anybody ever walk home from school? You used to walk to and from school, anybody? Still left in the room that ever did that? Okay. Uh, I, my, my, I, my, we, would, we would take, we lived like a, three quarters of a mile from a high school and and it was like a drop-off line of, of cars all in our neighborhood. And, and uh, they'd still drive to school. And I, but but, when, uh, but we, we were like, no, no, no. Three-quarters of a mile, you don't need a car for that. Walk. Okay, you're in high school. But when, when I, I remember when I was in um, K-5, okay, I was in kindergarten. I was just a little kindergartner. And uh, I, there was a walk line and a bus line. Anybody remember that? There was a walk line and a bus line. Well, my buddy Darren, we were five, okay? I still remember Darren. Darren was my best friend uh, in kindergarten. And, and we lived, uh, I thought we lived near each other because we did all these play dates together. My grandmother would uh, watch me after school and she would take me over to Darren's house and Darren would come over to my house. And, and so we were just decided, cut out the middleman. So we decided at school that I was going to walk home. Uh, I was going to walk home, and, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, we were going to walk home, and, but then we remembered in the walk line something that, that he forgot at his house, and that I thought, well, I better tell my grandmother where I'm going, so I better walk home too. Now we're in the walk line. So we're not in the bus line. We're in the walk line. Well, my grandmother didn't live very far away. She probably lived less than a mile from the school, maybe about a mile or at the most. Um, but I, I, I figured, no worries. I've got this. I've got this. I know how to get to her house. Surely I know how to get to her house. I, well, I'd never done it before, but I surely I can figure this out. I mean, come on. You don't got to be a rocket science to figure out a mile walk. Uh, and my, my little five-year-old brain just made complete and total sense. In fact, it was the responsible thing to do in my little five-year-old brain. Because, you know, I didn't want to just let, let her worry about where I was. Except when the bus got to her house. <laughs> and the bus opened the door and some kids got off and she realized, where's Shane? Where is he? Well, I was in the walk line. And Darren, we were going to walk. We figured, well, we'll walk home together. And Darren got in the walk line. And uh, he knew how to, because he was always in the walk line, actually. And he, he normally walked home. So we got to the end of the curb. It literally was like, the walk line was like here. And we were like this, like walking forward and getting ready. And, and then they say, okay, you can walk. And then we started walking. We walked to the curb. And he goes, all right, I go this way. I'm like, I don't think that's my way. And so I said, I think I have to go straight. And he goes, okay, well, we'll see you at the house then. And he walked. And I went, hmm. <laughs> I thought, wow. Well, I could go back to the bus line. Maybe they haven't left yet. So I thought, well, I'll go back to the bus line. I went back to the bus line. Nobody there. Now, this is a long time ago, y'all. This stuff can't happen anymore, I'm sure. But, but <laughs> my little five-year-old brain was like, uh, I can do it. So I started walking home. I started walking all by myself, just walking down the streets, 
Lansdale, Pennsylvania, just walking down the streets, thinking, that house looks familiar. I think I've been here before. I think I've I think maybe, and I walked around for a while, and you know what? Eventually, I actually made it home to my grandmother's house. Isn't that cool? Five-year-old was a pretty great accomplishment. So you tell me why I was in so much trouble. (laughs) How do you not praise that? Mother, I don't know. I'm just (laughs) She's like, don't look at me. It was your grandmother, okay? (laughs) Okay. She was livid. And you know what? Now, back in that day, kids, you're not going to understand this. You're not going to be able to comprehend this, okay? Watching online, uh, get the kids together. They're going to be shocked right now. Do you know that the school was not the one she was mad at? She was mad at me because back in those days, you didn't get in trouble for what they did. Uh, They didn't get in trouble. You got in trouble for everything. It was your fault. You got in the wrong line. You didn't take the right responsibility. You didn't do the right thing. I I think nowadays, if somebody sent a five-year-old into the walk line, (laughs) there would be uh, something to pay for that. But but yeah, I was in trouble, y'all. But how many ever feel like that in your spiritual walk? Where you're just kind of wandering around. Yeah, this feels familiar to me. I go to, like, I, I like, I love coming to this church, or I love coming, to, or, or it starts to feel unfamiliar. Then you're like, oh, man, I don't know. The neighborhood's changing. I, I don't know what to do. Nothing feels comfortable to me. I, I'm not sure what to do next. Uh, uh, get it all back. Get it, get it back to be exactly the way it's comfortable to me. Or, 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 and you're walking, maybe you're coming in new to a place, and you're like, I, I just don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know what, what do I do next? See, God never designed for you to be in the walk line of faith by yourself. He never wanted you to walk alone. When he went and called his disciples, he called them together to walk that no one walks alone. And Jesus teaches us in Luke chapter 9 and verse and chapter 10. And and that's going to be our text today. In Luke 9 and 10, he teaches us this truth that no one walks alone. Because we walk in one direction. We walk in the same direction. Here's what he says in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Then he said to them, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross. Remember that week week one? Uh, Or or, or week, uh, week, excuse me, week two uh, of taking hard steps. Taking hard steps. That... There's a part of taking this step that denies yourself to follow him. But here's what I want to point out. He says to take up the cross, how often? Daily. Every day. To take up his cross daily and then do what? Follow me. Today, every day, Jesus is asking you to take another step and follow him. And tomorrow, guess what he's going to do? He's going to ask you to take another step. And tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, daily follow him. And if you do that, whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. See, setting aside my own directions or has always been a struggle even for those when Jesus was calling them finding that next step discovering that with next step was always been a struggle and in order for us to head in the same direction we've got to avoid some detours that Jesus teaches about teaches us about in verse 57 one person comes to him Lord on the road I will follow you wherever you go Jesus replied foxes have dens and birds have nests but the son of man has no place to lay his head just so you know Because the first detour that stops us, I think, many times is that detour of uncertainty. Of uncertainty. Like, I, God, I will follow you. Just show me where I'm going to end up. Show me what's going to happen with this job. Lord, if I take this next step, I feel you calling me, Lord. I feel you calling me. I feel you calling me. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. Now, what's the plan? Um, and how, how are you going to pay for this? 
Um, I, I, where, 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 where are we going to go next? God, yes, Lord. Oh, what a great worship time. I'm so moved. God, I want to serve you. I want to serve you. So what's the plan again? On the drive home, you know, after worship. So how's this going to work, God? How much money do I make? Uh, how much, uh, how many hours? Uh, how, how, how am I going to work this out with my problem? You know, you called me to that city, but you know, I actually live here. Like, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I feel calling to go to somewhere else in the world, but, but I don't live there. So I, I guess you're going to have to, well, Lord, wake me up when you figure all that stuff out. And then I'm going, I'm in, Lord, I'm in. In the meantime, till you get back to me with that plan, I'm just going to go ahead and stay here, right? Because there's a lot of uncertainty in taking a step with Jesus. He doesn't tell you what the 10th step is. He tells you what the next step is. And sometimes that can be a detour where I need details. And details take my direction. Lord, I'll tell you the next step. And you know, isn't it cool that God actually knows that about you? He knows you're all hung up on details. So you take a little bit longer, but you know what he has to make? Sometimes he has to make your next step. He's got to show you. Now, don't be that person who like drowning and they send the boat and the helicopter and the thing, you know, all that joke. uh, And he gets to heaven and says, you know, Lord, where were you? He's like, I sent you a boat. I sent you a helicopter. I sent you all these things. You didn't have to drown, buddy. But, but God knows that you're into details. He knows that he made you that way. He's not surprised. But there's this tension of needing to know all of the plan and taking the next step with a one part of the plan that God just shows you right now. Just this one. Oh God, I'm going to see, I'm going to need some blueprints on this, okay? I'm going to need a little more than that then maybe today you won't take that step. The great news with God is that he'll be there tomorrow asking you the same question. Will you follow me? Will you follow me today? Will you be willing to take a next step even with just this tiny one thing? He says in 59, another traveler teaches us a different lesson. He said to another man, follow me, but... That man replied, Lord, first let me go bury my father. Jesus said to him, (laughs) kind of harsh. The guy's dad just died, Jesus. Let the dead bury the dead. What? What is Jesus saying? Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Jesus isn't making a proclamation that somehow we, we don't be family or not family people or not grieving with people who grieve. That would go against his truth. I think he's talking about a detour of crisis control. Do you know that every time Jesus calls you, there's probably another crisis going on in your life. And guess what? Tomorrow, guess what? There's going to be tomorrow. Can you guess? Another crisis. And guess what's going to happen the next day? Just take a guess, a wild guess. Another crisis. Yes, thank you. And what do you think is going to happen next week? Just take a wild guess. Crazy. It's crazy. Do you know that next week there's going to be another crisis? And what do you think is going to happen after COVID and after things? What do you think is going to happen next year? Oh, it's going to be smooth sailing from there, Pastor. Really? Have you learned nothing from the crisis from before and the before and before and before that and before that and before that? You know what? Your life in this world, you, Jesus said, you will have many troubles. If it were not so, I wouldn't tell you that. You're going to have all kinds of trials. And if you're trying to avoid crisis... Maybe this isn't for you because you need to know how to follow him in the midst of a crisis and still advance the kingdom of heaven forward. You're always going to have a crisis. You're always going to have uncertainty. The next follower teaches us, so still another. He says, I will follow you, Lord, but first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. 
Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Some of us suffer from some history hiccups. It just keeps coming up. Can't stop it. Just got, oh, you don't know. I, I have all this stuff that's happened in the past or, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta, I have to work so much stuff out. You don't know how complicated my life is. My life is so complicated. I, I, my family is crazy. Really? You're so unique. I've never met any family that's crazy. You're so unique. You're the unicorn of all families. No one has ever, Jesus has never seen a family like your family. Ever. Never. Jesus' family left him in another city. They didn't even know he was not with them. That's crazy. Forget the walk line. How about you walk home with your whole family and he's not even with you, okay? Jesus knows. He understand, he's met every family on the planet. He knows how complicated your past is. He knows how rich your past has been. And sometimes that history keeps coming up and coming up and coming up and stopping me from following Jesus to the next step. Proverbs instructs us, even worse, that a warning. Sure, the way of wisdom will lead along straight paths. And when you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. But do not set your foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it. And go on your way. Because not every path is the right path. There are wrong paths that take us down detours. There are wrong paths that take us down the wrong road. And he's saying, don't even step on them. Don't even walk. You know, I'm just walking with my friend. I'm just walking with my friend. You know what? Your friend is walking in the wrong direction. Stop walking with them. This is why it's so scary. Like, in, in, if you're a teenager here and you start like getting into relationship world, okay? Uh, there's, this is why the Bible talks about don't, don't connect yourself with someone who's heading in the wrong direction or is heading in a direction that doesn't believe like you or is heading in a direction that, oh, well, eventually when I'm done with them, then they will. Meanwhile, we're all walking down the same path. You're walking in the wrong direction. Don't, Proverbs says don't even put your foot on it. Don't even, don't even step on it. Why? Don't even start down it. Avoid it. Don't be detoured. If we're going to head in the one direction, in the same direction, what does that look like for us as a church? No one walks alone. No one walks alone. So what does it look like for you? What's your next spiritual step? What's your next spiritual step? Well, we'd love to discover that with you. In fact, why would you keep that secret? Well, because if I, you know, tell everyone, then, you know, then I'm on kind of, you know, everybody has all the expectations, and I don't want all that, and I want to walk by myself, and that way no one knows, and, and if I keep it quiet to myself, and, and who knows, I've tried it so many times and I've failed, and I don't want to look like a failure, I don't want to be, look stupid, I, you know, this is, but it's embarrassing, it's embarrassing to talk about that next step. Okay, well then just stay where you're at is what you're trying to do. See, the enemy wants to keep us all confused, heading wrong directions, not moving forward. He wants to keep you alone so that you don't take a next step. That's what he wants. And then he wants us to, to stay divided. He wants us to stay uh, disunified. He wants us to stay focused on the wrong things. And he wants us to stay all hung up on our past or, or hung up on uncertainty or figuring out when this crisis settles down or, or heading this path with this other person who's heading the wrong path. He, he wants us to stay in that place. And then when we finally say, yes, God, you know what he wants you to do? His last resort is for you not to tell anyone. Shh. Keep it secret. That way, no one will bother you with what your next step is, and there'll be none of that nasty accountability. 
Ah, you know you. Who knows you like you know you? Nobody knows you like you know you. The enemy's just in your ear going, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody that. If you tell them that, and it gets desperate, you're going to start to tell someone that your next spiritual step, they're going to get desperate. They might even set it up so that the person who receives it goes, what? Oh, well, what you ought to do is da 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 What you need to do is this, this, this. What you need to do is that, da da And you're like, oh, I feel judged. I feel whatever. I feel like, oh. And the enemy goes, see, this is what I'm talking about. This is why you don't tell them. Walk alone. That's the best plan. Walk by yourself. No one knows your pace. I don't want to be on someone else's pace. I don't want to do one of those running groups, you know, how they get you in a running group. Uh, <laughs> I used to do marathons and they had pace groups. Anybody do pace groups? You know what I'm talking about? Pace groups uh, where like if you want to run the marathon in a certain time, you run with this group. And now all the people in the group are like criticizing the, the pace person most of the time. <laughs> that They're like, this is too fast. This is too slow. We're not going to get there. And the person who knows it has done it like 300 times. And to be a pacer, you've got to do it so many times in that time that they know the pace, they know how to do it. But you're certain that you know your pace, you know what you should be on, and you, and you bail from that over and over and over again. And what, if, what if no one walked alone? I wonder how many spiritual steps you would take in 2022 if you were not walking by yourself. How amazing would that be as a church? that we would be walking together, not on the same step, just walking together, making steps. Get your steps in. Get your steps in. Just don't do it alone. We're in a club. We all see the steps. Identify the steps. Here's how you can do it. It's really simple. This is so easy. You just hit this QR code on your phone and it takes you to a link you answer a few simple questions. And if you want someone to walk with you, I'm not, we're not even going to force you to make some. We, if you want to keep the whisper in your ear, be by yourself, be by yourself. Or maybe you're in a group because our groups have, have started doing this. And if you're in a WEAG group and you're walking with someone, it's still good to tell us what that next step is. But maybe you don't need help because you're in a group and you're walking with, you're telling your group what it is. Tell your group what, what the step is. Tell your, tell your spiritual coach, tell your spiritual mentor, tell your spiritual father, tell your spiritual mother what your next step is. That's awesome. Tell your church too. We want to walk with you. And if we can help you, we want to walk with you. Or you can go to the, uh, to the weag.church next step. If you can't figure out the QR code, don't worry. It's okay. And if you still can't figure it out, if you know how to email, you can just email me. And I will help you. No one walks alone. Say that with me. No one walks alone. One more time. No. We have to be heading in the same direction. And number two, I only have two points, so we're halfway there. No one walks alone because we have one mission. We have one mission. In Luke 9, Jesus sent out at the beginning of the chapter, he sends out the 12. He gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. They had a mission. They were sent out with a mission. Well, by the time we get to chapter 10, that 12 becomes 72. And now, 12 people become 72 people who are also on a mission. After this, the Lord appointed, chapter 10, 72 others and sent them two by two. Sent them all by themselves in the walk line just to figure it out. Where are you, Darren? I never saw Darren that day. My play date was canceled. In fact, all future play dates with Darren were at suspect. <laughs> because I convinced my grandmother that day that he convinced me. I said, sorry, Darren, we may never play together, but I had to save myself, brother. 
You know, I'm five. It's, a, it's survival of the fittest around here. This is a serious world we live in. This is times of crisis. You got to speak up. <laughs> but if you just walk by yourself, he sent them two by two. Because when you fall, there is another person to do what? Pick you up. You've been walking by yourself so long, you're like, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. You walk by two by two, and you're like, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. This has happened before, believe me. Just leave it, don't touch it. Don't, just touch it, don't touch it. <laughs> it's happened to me all the time. I used to have a, I had a, I, I still have a bad ankle, but it used to be so bad that um, it would just literally like give out, and I'd be walking in college and like, and it looked like I have a seizure, you know. It was great on dates. It was really worked out great for me. Um, and, uh, but I realized that, you know, when you, you start to fall, people go, Ugh, they don't know what to do. So you got to tell them, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good, right? And you learned it. I learned it. I, I'm like, I'm, no matter what, if I'm dying, I probably know how to shout out before, right before, in the last second, before my last breath will be, I heard his words, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Good, but you're bleeding everywhere. No, I'm good. He sent them two by two. He didn't want you to be alone, but in order to be he heading in the same direction, you've got to be on the same mission. He sent them out with mission. He sent them out with his mission, not just any mission. It was his mission to proclaim the kingdom of God, and now the 12 becomes 72. And he said he told them the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. I love that. He says, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send out workers. And then he goes, go. Guess what? You're the worker. Jesus tells them, here's how you answer a prayer. Here's how you make sure it's answered. You are the answer. In the same chapter, they came to him about a whole feeding problem, food issue. Jesus says, you go feed them. Say, what now? We have just this little lunch. Remember last week? We just had this little lunch. Well, how about you start packing that lunch? Start packing that lunch. Because I got 5,000 people, 5,000 families to feed here. Got like 15,000 people gathered on this field, Jesus. Yeah, start packing. Let's get to work. All of you, together. Not just you. He didn't just pick on one person. He didn't say, Peter, I'm tired of you just talking about, would you just do something all by yourself? Get over there all by yourself. He said, no, all of you. He sends them out with mission, and 12 becomes 72. And then he says this in verse 16. Whoever listens to you listens to me. It's not your mission. It's my mission. Some of us get all hung up on the fact that I can't, I can't win this person. I can't win this person. I can't win this person. Guess what? It's not your job to win that person. It's not your gospel. Now, you've made it yours, and you've accepted it into your life, but it's his mission, and it's his kingdom that you're advancing. So if they listen, if they, if, big if, if they listen to you, they are listening to me, Jesus said. Whoever rejects you also, ha, 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 whoever rejects you is rejecting me. When you're on mission with God, how powerful is that? I don't want to tell you. They rejected me. No, they didn't. They rejected the mission you represent. They rejected God. Whew. Whoa. Jesus taught them, shake the dust off of your feet on that town. Symbolically saying, you're in God's hand. Y'all, you, you decide to walk by yourself. I was offering you a chance and I wanted to do that with you. The 72 returned, verse 17, with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. 
when you advance the kingdom of heaven instead of your own, there is no one or anything that can stand in the way of God's kingdom. How amazing would it be if all of us were on mission together to advance his kingdom forward, if all of us were on mission together to give the gospel to those who don't know it, all of those were on mission together, how powerful would it be as a church that we, this Easter, we were leveraging Easter to invite them to church, not so we pack the house, but we, so we pack heaven. How powerful would it be that we would be asking people who we thought to be far from God and using this as an opportunity to invite them, to invite them to hear the gospel, to invite them, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's the right time, I don't know if it's the right thing. Jesus says, yeah, okay, then walk by yourself. But if you want to be on mission, here's my mission. I'm sending you out. I'm sending you, I put you in relationship. I put you in this neighborhood. I put you at this job for a reason. It wasn't to make money or just to have a nice house or just to have some friends. It was to advance the kingdom. But if you want to make it about money and make it about friends, then that's easy to happen and there's plenty of detours for that. If you need all the answers figured out, if you need all that, if you need to be by yourself for a time, I get it. Jesus is just saying, hey, I'm inviting you to go in the same direction, on the same mission. So what does that look like as a church? How do we do that as a church? Well, I wanna, I wanna prepare you. I wanna prepare you. We began the service that way with Pastor John preparing us. Hey, if you bring somebody to church, here's what we do. Go to the, remember what it was? Go to the Oh, yes, they were listening, Pastor. They were listening. All right, go to the meeting group. Um, so now you know where to go. And they're going to take them through some steps. It's really simple. But I want you to be prepared also, if you bring someone who's far from God, what to expect. I want you to know up front, when you invite your friend, this is what's going to happen. On Easter Sunday, I'm going to preach the gospel. Uh, on Easter Sunday, I'm, I'm going to ask for people who, who maybe are far from God to come and accept Jesus as their savior. I'm gonna ask them um, to raise their hand and identify some, here's some steps. I'm gonna show you right on, on the screen. Here's some steps. I'm gonna ask, you, ask them to raise your hand. A and then after they pray a prayer, we're gonna say no one prays alone, we're gonna pray together. And after they pray the prayer, I'm gonna encourage them. that somebody. In fact, we're gonna do with eyes open you know why? Because uh, we're, why we're changing that? Because people aren't identifying themselves and people are walking alone. We've got 10 people or so per week that are coming to Jesus every single week, but we're not walking with any of them. That's not making disciples. That's making a moment. God called the church to make disciples. So we're changing it so that we make disciples so that we can learn who's doing it. And we want you to be in with us. We don't want to do this alone. We want it to be your mission because it's God's mission, not our mission. So when you invite somebody, we're just gonna, and I promise you, I've been doing this a while. I promise you it's not gonna be weird. It's not going to be weird. It's not going to be so crazy awkward. It's not going to be, it's going to be a time of, of, uh, of great rejoicing because they're going to make the best decision they've ever made in their lives. They don't know it's supposed to be done in private unless you tell them. <laughs> this is a prayerful moment. I'm not looking, I'm not looking at you. I, you know, listen, we've done that to make that a quiet moment, and, and, but, but you got to ask yourself, are we really making disciples? Are we really walking with people? Are we really doing it? And we've just humbled ourselves and been honest as a church and looked at it and said, hey, you ever wonder, like, d does anyone else see that there's a problem here? Yes, there is a problem. What are we going to do about it? Let's fix it together. Let's be w heading the same direction on the same mission and fix it together. So we're going to ask them, after they pray, we're going to encourage them about the best decision they ever made, and we're going to get them, a, a, I've accepted Jesus card, just simple. There'll be cards everywhere. Everyone will get one. Every, it'll be easy, and they can just fill it out. Just 
give, them, give us a way to contact. But how cool would it be if you have a friend and they, they raise their hand and you say, hey, I'll get that card. I'll get that card to the right place. And I just take it, I take it back and give it to a greeter. Simple. Give it to one of the greeters. I can go to the meet and greet. Take them to the meet and greet. And hand the card to somebody. And then what's going to happen next is we're going to have a pastor connect with them. We're going to have a pastor connect with them and just help determine what the next step is. How can we help you? How can we walk with you? Maybe that next step is in, we're going to encourage them towards a baptism. We're going to say, here's the first step. Here's what the scripture teaches the first step in coming to Jesus. Maybe you've never been baptized. Maybe, maybe someone's made a decision or they thought, well, I've been baptized as a child. That's great. That's, there's nothing wrong with being baptized as a child. We're not saying that. What we're saying is that scripture teaches that after you accept Jesus, that you make a public proclamation in baptism. And we're just gonna teach them and just say, hey, would you like to do that? Would you like to just go public and say, yes, I decided to follow Jesus. And we want to be, how cool would it be if you went with him, if you encouraged that and you know what's happening. And then we're going to say, as they get, we're going to say, so what's the next step? And they're going to tell us, well, I don't know anything about this Bible. Or, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. You tell me. Uh, what should the next step be? We'll walk with them. Maybe you've been following Jesus. Maybe you bring somebody who's just out of church but they know all the things. They've actually known what their next step is for a very long time and been ignoring it. But they came back. How amazing would it be if you said, we just wanna, we're just a church that no one walks alone. We'd love to walk with you. We're gonna have, somebody's gonna contact you and just ask you and see how can we help you. That's it. It's really simple. I wonder what it would look like if everyone was heading the same direction on the same mission. If as one church, we were heading in one direction with one mission. Jesus' mission. Our mission statement is simple. Jesus came up with it. I didn't come up with it. We don't get to do that. It's not our church. It's his to build to see every person experience transformation through Jesus Christ. That's how we say it. That's how we say it. But it's the Great Commission. It's what God told us to do. How amazing would it be if we were all heading in the same direction? Well, 12, you know the story of Scripture. If you've been reading it, 12 became 72. 72 became 144. By the time we get to Book of Acts, 3,000 people 3,000 families decide to follow Jesus together and daily they are being added to. By the time we get to Acts chapter six, it's like that's doubled in number. 6,000 families, 12 to 25,000 people. It just kept kept doubling because God wants his kingdom to double. When he gave the servant one talent, how much did he say? Two. And and he gave the servant the next one, the next one. Everyone was double. In scripture, you see it over and over and over and over and over again because every person should double themselves. Going and making disciples is actually making another you. The problem is if you're not the good you, you're not following Jesus yourself, then you won't make a disciple. If you're not on mission, what would it look like for a whole church? Well, a whole bunch of people heading in the same direction, on the same mission. You know what they call that? They call that an army. They call that an army. And it doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are, if you have one purpose and one mission and you are totally dedicated yourself to that mission, there is no one that can overcome you. You can accomplish a lot together. Look through history. This isn't just true for the kingdom of heaven. This is true of men in battle. Look through history. Go all the way back to the the Greeks versus the Persian, the the great wars between the Spartans and the the amazing thing. What, What happened? Battle of Marathon. Go look at your history. Defeats Xerxes' father. 
These Persians who are outnumbered two to one, defeat them because they're grown up their whole lives. As a Spartan, you were dedicated from a child to fight a battle. You knew nothing but one mission and one direction your entire life. And when they got on that mission, no one could stand in front of them. In fact, finally, the end of it all, 10 years later, Xerxes wants to avenge his father and he comes to, uh, and he comes to fight the battle and that's the, the infamous or famous uh, battle against the 300. And the reason why it was 300 is because it was actually 7,000 against, well, they claimed to be 2 million, but it was really more like 200,000, but it might as well have been 2 million. And they held them off for days in one tiny pass to their last city. And when they realized that someone had betrayed them from their own camp and told them about a little shepherd's path that went behind the enemy line, they realized they were betrayed and all was lost. And the 300 Spartans dismissed everybody and said, we will hold them. You're going to hold like 100,000 people left? We've killed tens of thousands of them, but there's still way too many. We'll hold until you get free. And they gave their lives in that moment for that mission to free their people. Jesus is calling us to give our lives for one mission. I don't know where you're at in that, but my prayer coming into this today, God has shown me this, and I have an image in my head that God told me to ask them to be his army, to be on mission, heading the same direction with one mission and one direction. And you get enough people doing that, I'll call that my army. I wonder if God's wanting to, for you to rise up, for him to rise inside of you and thus raise an army. We were praying over our ones last night. We had a bunch of us in here praying over the ones who are far from God. We had the stage filled with names all along here, names that you had sent us and said, this person's far from God, I'm praying for them, I'm praying for them, and we joined you in prayer. We've been praying, a team of people have been praying for these names every day, and we came together last night and consecrated this place and prayed over each and every name. Every name was prayed for and claimed before God, so even before you knew that 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 you thought you were the only one who wanted to reach it? Not anymore. This is a church deal. This is a family deal. And we're, we're gonna reach them together. You're not by yourself anymore. We've got a team of people who want to reach your one, the one person who lives next to you, the one person who works next to you, the one person who's been in a relationship, the one person in your family who's far from God, that one person who left, who was with God but left God and is no longer following him. We want to come alongside you and be on mission together. I wonder if God would raise up an army today who would say, I'm not just going to walk my own path. I'm going to join this mission. I'm going to advance this kingdom forward. It's not to pack the house of God. It's to pack the house of heaven. And I desire for you to come alongside me and say, yes, I will be his army. And if that's your heart right now, would you just stand right now to your feet and say, I want to be his army. In fact, I want to pray for some of you that God's moving in. And John is going to lead us in this song. And any time during this song, come forward and consecrate yourselves. Joshua said before the night before they went into battle, before he took the children of Israel into the promised land, he told every single soldier to come and consecrate themselves for God's mission to lead his people to the promised land, to advance his kingdom forward. And he's still asking us to do that today. Right now, come on. We want to pray for you. Show me who you are and fill me with your 
heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Let's fill the stage. Let's fill the aisles. Holy, Let's be his there army. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a And I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken And I will build my life upon your love It is a firm foundation Maybe you're here right now and you're like, I, I don't know if I'm on this mission or not because I'm not sure if I've ever crossed the line of faith and said, Jesus, you're Lord of my life. You are Lord of my life. Paul told Timothy, join me in my suffering like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one serving a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. And in this passage, his commanding officer is God. And maybe you don't know where you stand with Jesus right now. I want to invite you, whether you're watching online or you're here in person, to right now, this is your moment to cross that line of faith. And you say, I, I don't know if that's what you, who you're exactly, I don't know that I've ever crossed that line of faith where I've said, Jesus, you are Lord of my life. I will follow you. I will follow you. And I want to declare that today. Raise your hand right now. Yes, thank you. Anyone else with these? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else with these? Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, thank you. I don't want to miss you and leave you out of this prayer. Who else with these? All right. Yes, thank you. Pray this prayer in your own words. No one prays alone. We're going to pray out loud. If you're not at the altar praying, you're going to pray this prayer. If you're in your pew right now, you're going to pray this prayer together, whether you prayed it a thousand times or the first time. And you can make it your own prayer, but I'm just going to give you some words right now to say to God, repeat after me out loud, dear Jesus, I will follow you. I love you because you first loved me. I believe you died for me. And I receive forgiveness of sins. I also believe that you rose again and are alive today. And because you have new life, I have new life. In Jesus' name. Would you thank God for all these folks coming in the kingdom? Hey. I want us to go out. I want us to go out today on mission. Not just not just uh, leaving this place and saying that hey, this was a great sermon or a great service or that isn't even the purpose of it. Let our worship continue. Can we continue our worship? Let's continue our worship with our walk as we leave this place and stay in worship. Would you do that? 
and go out into the mission field together and reach those who are far from God and have heading in the same direction of God, denying yourself, following him every day, tomorrow and the next day. Tell us what your next step is so that we can follow with you. Tell us who your one is so we can pray with you and go on mission with you because we leave here together with one mission. If you're here and for the first time or you brought somebody who's new or you made a decision today, to follow Jesus. You, you made it for the first time. We want to connect with you. Go to the meet and greet. We want to get you connected and just ask you, hey, how can we come alongside and help you? Please, we'd love to meet you today. I'll be right up here. If you want more prayer or, or something else going on in your life, I'm going to be right here. So if you need prayer, if you want to go to the meet and greet, let's leave on mission together today. Jesus, we follow you today and tomorrow and the next day in one direction with one mission and none of us leave here walking alone in Jesus name Amen Amen, Amen.